Happy holidays, everybody. Now, you know what? It's not Christmassy enough. Okay, Merry Christmas. <laughs> well, happy holidays. Whatever, you know, whatever, you know, Hanukkah and everything. All of them. All of them. As I was saying, happy holidays, everybody! I'm so excited! This is another Nintendo Switch holiday buying guide to help the mums and the dads and the grandmas when they're going out to the game stops and buying little Timmy and Jimmy video games and they don't know what to get because there's so much to choose from. I mean, this year there's like 50 Pokemon games on the shelf. My buying guide videos weirdly get people jolly. They get, they get people ready to be in the season of Christmas or the holidays, whatever you celebrate. But I do specifically try and just focus on physical releases. I don't think many mums and dads are browsing the eShop looking for presents. We're about half a decade into the Switch's release now and there are thousands of video games. So this time, I have really tried hard to just cull the list down back to the bare necessities. The games that you actually should be needing to buy and the ones that you should be needing to avoid. Last thing before we get started, I gotta tell you how this works. To start with, we have the $50 to $60 games. Then you have your $30 to $40 games. Then finally, you have your 10 to $20 games. All three of those tiers have brackets as well. We have the must buy category, the maybe buy, and the avoid. Also, I want to add, I go by the new prices for video games. I don't go by sales or pre-owned because that really starts to skew things and make things confusing. It goes without saying, if I recommend a game that's like $40 and you find it for $10, buy that. Let's get started with all the physical games. Again, no digital games. In fact, if you want to buy any digital games online this holiday season, a good tip I do have, a good buying guide tip I have, is to download Honey. This video is sponsored by PayPal Honey. I'm not kidding when I say my biggest tip for online shopping this holiday season, whether it's video games or otherwise, is to have Honey on your PC or phone. PayPal Honey is the number one shopping tool in America. To put this as simple as possible, Honey will search for promo codes at checkout so you don't have to. It works for things that you're already buying on a lot of websites you're already using, and it's just fun. Because you don't have to do anything, but when it pops up and says, hey, do you want to save 10, 20 bucks? Yeah. I can almost guarantee you you'll save money this holiday season if you get it. And how do you get it? Well. You just got to go to joinhoney.com forward slash beat-em-ups. That's it. It's completely free. It's easy to add. Just going there, getting this free app, saving money will help support this channel. All right, let's get started. I'm going to start with all the $50 to $60 games in the must-buy category. To start, I'm going to go through all the new games that came out this year. So until I let you know we're in the older games, these are all brand new games. First up, the big blockbuster game of this holiday season is Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Only released about a week or two ago, so chances are whoever you're buying for doesn't have this yet, unless they're a huge Pokemon fan and they got it day one. Again, that's Scarlet and Violet. Don't get them confused with the older Pokemon games, Sword and Shield, which are about two or three years old now. All you need to worry about is Scarlet and Violet this Christmas. There is one warning here. It is a giant internet meme right now that these games run terribly. They're buggy, they're glitchy, but it's Pokemon and it's still a ton of fun and your kid isn't going to to care. That's the reality. Moving on, there is another Pokemon game that released in January of this year. It's called Pokemon Legends Arceus. This is a different style of Pokemon game over Scarlet and Violet, where they gave you free open world freedom of throwing your Pokeball around and catching whatever Pokemon you can find. This is also a fantastic Pokemon game. So if you decide to grab both of these, your kid's gonna have hundreds of hours between these two games. If I had to recommend a Pokemon game out of the two, I would stick with Scarlet and Violet just because it's the newest one. Moving away from Pokemon, we have Kirby. Kirby released earlier this year. It is a fantastic action-adventure platformer-style game. It's kid-friendly, it's adult-friendly, it's just a ton of fun. If whoever you're buying for loved games like Mario Odyssey, they're going to love Kirby in the Forgotten Land. We had a new Splatoon game released this year. Another game that's good for kids, good for adults. If your kid loves playing like multiplayer shooter-style games, but you don't want to give them Fortnite or Call of Duty because... 
understandable. Lean maybe towards Splatoon 3. It's a shooter, but you shoot paint. It's just a little ink and it's just, it's fun. It's a multiplayer game online, but there's no way of talking to any of the people you're playing with. So you don't have to worry about them communicating with weirdos. All of this is done very intentionally to be kid friendly. There is also Splatoon 2 on the Switch that released like five years ago. So make sure you're getting Splatoon 3, which is the newest one. Bayonetta 3. We have a lot of threes this year. Bayonetta 3 is the next one. This game is fantastic. It's an action hack and slash style game. It's one of my favorite games on the console. If you know somebody that loves anime, this is very much that in a video game. The next three is Xenoblade 3. If you have someone that you're buying for who loves super long, grindy JRPGs, maybe they're also really into anime and they love the over the top action style stuff, this is a fantastic game for that. And then the last brand new game is kind of brand new. It's gonna take some explaining, but it's Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. You might see this on the shelf. It's $70 and it looks like a brand new game. It kind of is and it kind of isn't. Monster Hunter Rise without the Sunbreak that came out a few years ago that you'll still find on the shelf had some extra content added to it. That extra content costs about 30 bucks if you already have the game and you go online and download the rest. And that content is called Sunbreak. So something they did is they released this DLC with the main game in a full package this year. That's what you're seeing here. And it's $70. So if you don't have the base game or this new stuff, this is a fantastic deal. I love this game. It's one of my favorites on the console, but don't buy it for someone who already has Monster Hunter Rise because they can just go on the eShop and download the rest for like 30 bucks and save yourself like $40. Okay, that's all the new releases that are full price that I think are must buys for this year. Here's some more though that I think are just timeless games. We have Metroid Dread. I think this game is for all ages, but I would lean more towards adolescents and adults for this one purely just because the themes are a little spooky. Mario Party Superstars. This is the one to get right now. It takes a bunch of the old Mario Parties that were really good and remakes all of it to be brand new. It's just fantastic. Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury and Mario Odyssey are the two traditional Mario games to get. And make sure you have Mario Odyssey first, but then definitely get that Bowser's Fury as well. Of course, we have games like Zelda Breath of the Wild. I still think that's the one game to have. I would get rid of all of this and keep that one game if I had, if I had no choice. That's the one. Super Smash Brothers. It's a fighting game for all ages. It brings characters from Minecraft and Animal Crossing and Zelda and Mario all into one big fighting game. And I'm sure you've heard of it. Why am I explaining it? Animal Crossing is a great game to get anybody, but I would say especially your partner, even casual gamers that don't really play games that often can end up falling in love with a game like Animal Crossing. Also, there's a ton of really great DLC that you can go onto the eShop and buy later if you want to add even more hours to the gameplay. Luigi's Mansion 3, Mario Kart 8, it's Mario Kart. Fire Emblem Three Houses is still so worth the money. I always throw this on here and a lot of people might disagree with me with it, but Mario Kart Home Circuit, if I was a kid and you bought me a remote controlled Mario Kart that's real that I can control with my Nintendo Switch and it actually works in a Mario Kart game in augmented reality and I could build tracks around my house, that would be the best Christmas ever. I, I'm not wrong. <laughs> okay, that is all the must buy games. If you're buying a game in this price range, you gotta grab one of those in my opinion. But if you still wanna hang out in this price range and you don't wanna get any of those, there's still a ton of fantastic games you could buy. Maybe they already have all those games. You're a great parent or you really love the Switch if you're buying for yourself. Or a lot of these were in must buy last year, but now they're a year old and they've kind of just trickled down into maybe. So let's take a look. The first game is a perfect example of why a lot of these are in maybe, and that's Live Alive. This game is fantastic, but it's a old school JRPG game that got remastered in a fantastic art style, and it's just so specific to somebody. Probably an older audience who grew up with RPGs and might enjoy playing a new revamped version of one. JRPGs in general can be very specific to a person. So are games like Triangle Strategy or Tactics Ogre Reborn for the same reason. I definitely wouldn't buy these these for a kid purely because it's just a lot of reading and a lot of strategy and kids just kind of like to shoot stuff. <laughs> Fire Emblem Warriors blend strategy and fast paced action and is really fun, but it's a prequel sequel kind of tie in with the Fire Emblem Three Houses game I talked about in the last section. So I think there is a prerequisite here of having kind of needed to play that first one. You don't really need to, but in my opinion, it makes it
it more enjoyable. Dragon Quest Treasures looks like a game I might enjoy, but it comes out on the 9th of December. And if you have a Dragon Quest fan in the house, maybe grab them that. Persona 5 Royal is a JRPG and one of the best games you'll ever play on the Switch or elsewhere. Thing is, it released several years back and now it's ported to the Nintendo Switch. So maybe the person you're buying for has already played this game. Just double check that before you grab it, but I love this game. Mario and Rabbit Sparks of Hope is a strategic turn-based style Mario game. I, I put this in maybe because this is not a traditional Mario game, but it does have a lot of charm and a lot of spunk and I liked the last one a lot more than this one. I don't know why I put Nickelodeon Kart Races 3 in here. I can never recommend a racing kart game when there's Mario Kart 8, but if you just have a kart fanatic in your house that loves kart games and they're sick of Mario Kart, this game isn't bad. No Man's Sky released on the Switch this year and I think it's fantastic and fun for all ages and can sink hundreds of hours into this Minecraft style game but based on planets and flying around space. But before releasing on Switch this year, it already came out on Xbox and PlayStation and PC, so make sure they don't have it there already and if they have one of those, you can buy it there instead because it's probably much cheaper. Finally, in this category for new games released this year, we have Nintendo Switch Sports. And I really debated on if I was going to put this in the maybe or the avoid. There's definitely way better ways to spend your money and if you're buying for just one person to play a game on their own, like little Timmy or Jimmy is gonna go to their bedroom and play this game, this is a horrible game to buy them. This is definitely a, a multiplayer game, a couch family game, and not something to replace a Mario or a Zelda. If you're gonna play as a family, if mom, dad, Timmy, and Jimmy, I keep referencing Timmy and Jimmy and this family like it's a real family. But if you're gonna play this as a family game, I mean, it has bowling, it has tennis. If you played Wii Sports, you know what you're in for. I think it's overpriced, I really do. I can't put it in a void when I think there is fun to be had here with a group. But that's all the new games this year in the maybes. If you wanna dive into some older games that have been on Switch the last several years, here are some more maybes. And I'm not gonna repeat myself too much, but a lot of these are maybes because of what I just said. They're getting a bit old. Pokemon Sword and Shield. I can't say avoid, but Scarlet and Violet is new and other than some performance issues, I think better. New Pokemon Snap. This is a fantastic on rails game where you go around taking pictures of Pokemon. It's a lot more fun than it sounds, but it's not the core Pokemon games. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I would say avoid personally for my taste. I don't think there's any reason to buy these, but uh, they're there for a Pokemon fanatic that has all of them and for some reason not these. Monster Hunter Stories 2. Definitely great for a younger audience. I think that game is so much fun. Pikmin 3. Shimigami Tensei 5. Another very core JRPG game. Mario Golf and Mario Tennis. It's Mario sports games. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. It tells a full prequel story with voice acting and animated cutscenes for Breath of the Wild in the warrior style of hack and slash killing hundreds of enemies at once. Don't get it confused with the other Hyrule Warriors game on Switch. That isn't as good. Don't even worry about it. If you want something more text-based that you just read a lot and then do more turn-based battles, the new Paper Mario. I didn't like it. But a lot of people loved it. If you want to play a more old school style Zelda game that's been remade in gorgeous art style, Link's Awakened. Super Mario Maker 2, I still think Astral Chain is worth the money. Highly recommend it. Ring Fit is literally the only fitness video game I've played that's fun and will shred the weight off of you. <laughs> kind of a maybe gift because, you know, if someone hasn't asked for it and you give them Ring Fit, there might be some implications there. I'm saying you might look like the bad guy, but uh, it is actually really good. If you want to catch up on the news, Xenoblade, you can get Xenoblade 1 and 2. I will always recommend Donkey Kong Country, even though it was a Wii U game and it's still $60, it is still one of the best side-scrolling platformers of all time. And then you got Diablo 3, Skyrim, Witcher 3, Doom, and Doom Eternal. These are all games that run, look, and play pretty great on the Switch, but they're gonna be $60 and you can get them for free a lot of places now, like Xbox. I mean, it's your money. Good news, we're almost done with the expensive games and better news, you don't have to buy these next ones. These are the ones you should stay away from. First up, we have two games that came out this year that are still full price. The first one is Mario Strikers Battle League. Earlier in the year when this was revealed, I tried to warn everybody that it looked bad. A lot of people didn't believe me and it released. And now everyone is going to agree with me that you should stay away from this, especially at full price. It'll entertain you for like five minutes. And then Digimon Survive. This game is not what you think it is. It's burned a lot of people. This game might look like and 
market itself as a tactics turn-based RPG style game, but it is 80-95% a graphic novel game, which is just a lot of reading and making decisions in text for like 40 hours. It's not good. I have moved Metopia into the Avoid because it's still $60 and I think that's insane for a game that released on 3DS like 10 years ago and really didn't add that much for the Switch port. I had it in the maybe last year. I kind of hope nobody bought it because I would feel terrible if the one game you got on Christmas this year under your tree in your stocking was Metopia. That's why it's in Avoid. I can't even put it in maybe. Same reason actually for WarioWare Get It Together. In the past, I felt bad putting games in Avoid because it sounded like I was saying they're bad games. Neither of these games are bad at all. Don't buy them for Christmas. <laughs> Splatoon 2, I already talked about it, but Splatoon 2, just get the third one. GTA Trilogy, it's like the only GTA, let me actually, let me do this less Australian. GTA Trilogy, you're welcome. What a waste of money. Super Mario Party, remember, Mario Party superstars, don't get confused and get the wrong one. The Labo Kits, they're just a bunch of cardboard, you don't want them. Kirby Star Allies, I put this in a void every year because it's like two hours long. Arms, 1-2 Switch, WWE 2K18. That's it. That's all the avoids. Now we get to do all that again with the $30 to $40 game. Starting with the new games that came out this year in Must Buy. And there's only one. You know, I realized as I was tug me, my cat's yelling at me. You want to say hello? If I talk any louder than this, he will run away. You hate when I get loud. You also love sitting under a Christmas tree and he just realized there's a new one. Oh, he is in his element. I only got that camera on just in time to see him walk away, but he was checking it out. You know, I realized as I was putting together this list, we didn't get that many physical releases of games this year. A lot of things went digital only. The only indie game that did a physical release that I would say is a must buy is Call of the Lamb. It's kind of roguelike. It also has some sim management, kind of like Animal Crossing. Other than that, in Must Buy, we have some standouts that just every year I like to recommend. Stardew Valley is a staple game for the Switch. Hades is one of my favorite games of all time. It's a roguelike action style game. And then Overcooked 1 and 2, the double pack. All right, let's dive into the maybe buy. I gotta be honest though, I love pretty much all of these games and I think a lot of these are must buy. To start, we have Sonic Frontiers. Yes, believe it or not, that's not in the $60 the price range, it's already shot down to about $30 to $40. I'm saying maybe because it's not uh, the uh, best game ever made. I actually have a whole review where I went really in depth with my thoughts and you can check that out separately if you want to watch it, but I still think it's a lot of fun and a Sonic fan would definitely enjoy it. Nier Automata came out on Switch this year. I think it's worth every single penny, but it is about a 10 year old game, so make sure the person you're buying for wants this. We had a couple of new TMNT games this year. Uh, there was the Kawabunga Collection, which is a collection of all the old Turtles games. I want to say, don't get that confused with TMNT Shredder's Revenge, which is the brand new Turtle game that a lot of people are loving this year. And if for some reason somebody's asked you for a Turtles game and you don't know which one it was, it's most likely this new one. I mean, they are both new, but the other one's old new. Unpacking gets a physical release on the 16th of December. I want to recommend this because if you have somebody that loves Animal Crossing, for example, and you don't really know what to buy them for Christmas, Unpacking has a similar cozy vibe and might help with stress. Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Remake launches on Switch on the 13th of this month. Somebody that might like Final Fantasy or they really enjoyed Final Fantasy VII Remake. Cuphead gets a physical release on the 6th. Probably already played Cuphead, but if they want to have it in their collection, or maybe if you want to challenge somebody that you know to play this game co-op with you and try and beat it, it's one of the hardest games in the world. A lot of people seem to really love Potion Permit. They say it has like Stardew Valley vibes. I actually haven't played this one, but I wanted to put it here because it's big right now and it's on a lot of shelves at GameStop. It Takes Two is a game that released two years ago, but now it's on Switch. This is a great one to get somebody that hasn't played it yet. It's a co-op game and you can only play it in co-op. So you need two people. You cannot play it on your own. Don't buy this game if you have like an only child, unless you're gonna play it with them and that would just be so sweet. You only need one copy of the game and then on your other Switch you can download it for free and link both of them up and you can play co-op on two different Switches. Again, for Animal Crossing fans, we have Story of Seasons. So Story of Seasons is like Animal Crossing, it's like Harvest Moon, but this one is new and it has an added element of the Doraemon character. I don't know who that is. If you do, this might be interesting to you. Dragon Ball Breakers, it's like that one game. Game. Uh, 
uh, Dead by Daylight, but if it was Dragon Ball. Life is Strange Arcadia Bay Collection. This is all the Life is Strange games. Again, if you're buying this for someone, they probably asked for it. And then Temtem. This one's interesting. It's hard to recommend when we just have Pokemon, because this game is supposed to be like somebody else's answer to Pokemon. You can play it co-op. It's very traditional, old school, really hard version of Pokemon. I don't think it's not worth it, but I mean, don't buy it over Pokemon. That's all the new games. Let's go through the rest that I think these are just a lot of games that have been out for a while. They've dropped in price. I think all of these are worth it for one reason or another. Zelda Skyward Sword HD. It's not the Zelda to get, but it's still a Zelda. Get Breath of the Wild. No More Heroes 3. I almost put this in a void. <laughs> But I know there are fans of the series and somebody might still be waiting to play it. Persona 5 Strikers. This is a Warriors game like Hyrule Warriors and Fire Emblem Warriors where you beat up a ton of enemies, but it's set in the Persona universe, but it's a sequel to Persona 5. So make sure they've played Persona 5 first, otherwise you might get spoilers for that game. Dying Light is one of the most impressive ports on the console and I will always recommend it. Four player co-op zombie punch in action. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, Nino Kuni 2, the Pokemon Let's Go games are $45 now. These are remakes of the original Pokemon games in a gorgeous art style. They're very kid friendly. They even introduced the ability to like throw Pokeballs like in Pokemon Go, the mobile app. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Again, it's nothing like normal Pokemon games. There are so much Pokemon on the Switch right now. Immortals Phoenix Rising. I still think this game is worth its price, but I've seen it drop as low as $20. This game is made to be pretty much a clone of Breath of the Wild. Don't buy it instead of a Zelda but if you know someone that loved Breath of the Wild, this could be a good addition. Yeez 9 is a great JRPG, Spiritfarer, Octopath Traveler, Cruisin' Blast, Subnautica Double Pack. It's like Minecraft, but underwater. I will always recommend World War Z. It's another zombie game you can play with three other friends. Cadence of Hyrule, Clubhouse Games 51 is apparently Scott the Waz's favorite game on Switch. It's just 51 little mini games like Blackjack and 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 Dite Dite. I don't know. He likes <laughs> Minecraft, Minecraft Dungeons, Xenoblade Tauna 2, Hollow Knight, Moonlighter, Dead Cells, Undertale. And for the first time, I've actually bumped something up. I've taken Ark out of the Avoid category that it's been in every year so far. And I've put it in maybe? I still wouldn't buy it over a lot of these other games. But it's not in Avoid anymore because they fixed it. I made a whole video about that actually. You can go and watch. So avoiding this year, we have a few games that are free. So Overwatch 2 released this year. It was a very confusing mess for me and a lot of people where they took the first Overwatch and they just added a bunch of stuff to it and then made it free. So if you have the first game already, you can just start playing Overwatch 2. If you don't have the first game already and you never paid for it, it's okay. You can just get the second one now for free. But back when you could pay for it, they released physicals and that physical, the Overwatch Legendary Edition is still $40. Just download it for free. That also goes for two other games and I say this every year. Fortnite. Every year around holiday season, Fortnite likes to put out a new physical. In the past, they've done like the Minty Edition. Cost $30 to buy Fortnite, a game you can just download for free. And then this year, there's a new Anime Legends collection that they've brought out. Don't buy that either. Just buy it's free. And Rocket League, the physical is still $40 and it's still free. Don't buy any of these games. Among Us even made a physical this year. I'm not saying don't buy it, but don't buy it. It's like $30 in the store or it's like $5 online. I was a little harsh this year to bravely default to. So I put that in a void. I think there are much better JRPGs to buy this year. If somebody has asked for it, that's different. I just can't recommend it. Overcooked 1 and 2, I keep recommending them, but I also like to make sure everybody knows if you're buying it physical, buy the double pack that actually have the games in it. I also moved Sonic Colors Ultimate down here now in a void because why is it still $40? And we have Sonic Frontiers now, which I would recommend over that. Little Town hero. It just wasn't that fun. Damon X Machina. It just wasn't that fun. Oh, and that's it for the avoid for that category. Let's move on to the 10 to $20. Everybody's favorite budget game. So Eastwood had a physical release and I've been seeing it for $20. I think anybody could pick this up and have a ton of fun. It's a pixel art style game, but it has so much to offer. It was inspired by games like Earthbound. It kind of has a similar story to like Last of Us. The exploration and the visuals, the music, 
everything about this game is fantastic, and just for this price, I think it's worth the gamble no matter who you're buying for. That's my only must-buy, actually, because that's the only thing that came out this year that I think is worth that price. Not many re physical releases this year, but also not many brand new games come out at $10. But we have a bunch of maybes, games that dropped down in price over the last year or so. Game Builder Garage is down at $20.25. A lot of people say to avoid this one. I still think if you have a kid who's really into making things and wants to be a game developer or designer and they always talk about that, this could be something really cool for them. It kind of gives them basic game building tools they can mess around with. It's not super in-depth, but it's still really cool and gets the gears turning and might inspire them to do cooler things later. Nick All-Stars Brawl. I've seen that as low as $20. Crash Bandicoot 4, Crash Insane Trilogy, and the Spyro Trilogy have all dipped down to about $20, $25. Tony Hawk 1 and 2 has dropped down to $20, $25 now. Super Monkey Ball Mania had a price drop, and then you still just have some games like Goose Game, Original Mario and Rabbids, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Also, Wonderful 101 is probably the cheapest first party Nintendo game you can get. It's kind of like Pikmin 3, and it's all the way down at $15 right now. And I can't believe we've made it here. We're at the avoids. Games that even for $10, you'd still be wasting your money. WWE Battlegrounds. Wow, these wrestling games can't catch a break on the Switch. I really hope a good one was coming. Looking at you, AEW Fight Forever. Troll and I, Carnival Games. Just one of them games like Balan Wonderworld, which is also a game to avoid. Both of these games are games that just, they look like something that might be fun. And then you play them. Don't. <laughs> Travis Strikes Again, so uninspired and boring. The Outer Worlds, while it runs okay, has probably got to be the ugliest looking Switch port. In my mind, I was like, is it Alan Wake 2? But Alan Wake 2 looks bad and runs really bad. The performance is awful. At least Outer Worlds plays okay. It just is, it is truly hideous. All right, sorry to end on a bad note, but that's the buying guide this year. I have shuffled so much stuff around from other years. Mostly because a lot of prices changed this year, but also my opinions on things and then newer releases really shuffle things around even more. When a new Pokemon game comes out, it just shuffles all the others down the line and I have to find other places to put them. I hope this list and this video has helped you this holiday season. I would love to hear who's watching these and how it's helping you because it just blows my mind every year. It gets so many views. So many people say they look forward to them. I wanna know, how did it help you? I have a ton more videos coming out so please subscribe, like the video, and if you decide to only watch this video, you're probably not even watching anymore. But if you do leave and never come back, I hope you have a happy holiday. I hope whatever it's Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever you're celebrating, have a good one. I'll see you next year for the next buying guide when you need my help again, you ungrateful. No, I'm kidding. Mer Merry Christmas, whatever. Happy holidays. And I'll, uh, I, I'll yeah. Santa's coming.